Hello, this is um, Hollywood Hempers Hour Ustream. Um, I, we are at November uh, 15th. I'm trying to get this set up here right. We're at November 15th uh, today. Kind of a stressful day a little bit. Um, Casper Leach is, um, well, we don't have any money. And um, unless we get $170 by tomorrow, um, his cable and his internet's going to be shut down, which means that we won't be broadcasting um, until we get money. And um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, he was just saying, well, this might be our last show. And I'm like hoping it's not our last show. Um, I just really hope it's not our last show. So, um, I don't think it will be. I mean, I think it's just, you know, part of the process of, you know, what it's like to start a network and it's part of the story. So I'm going to talk to the story. Yeah, it needs to be cleaned out a little bit. So it's 11.56 and we're supposed to be starting here pretty soon. I didn't do laundry Friday night tonight. Um, so, you know, have to have to do another show to do lawn, uh, laundry Friday night. That's that's uh, that's important. Um, oh, he just asked me something. How was your day? He said he asked me how my day was. That's North Flat. I'm a, I'm a, I'm conversing with North Flat. So, um, day was indeed. How was your day? So we're like three minutes away from showtime and I haven't gotten a call yet. <sighs> Nobody's really watching me, so I guess it doesn't really matter. I can... Uh, let me see. Time for him. It's not saying that he's online either. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. Casper needs a hundred and seventy. Hundred and seventy dollars to keep the cable and internet going by tomorrow. Tomorrow, or we get shut down for a while. Oh, there he is. Hey, Casper. Yes, ma'am. Hello, and happy Friday. Happy Friday. Hey, um, I want to let you know that I spoke with my friend Doug. I don't know if you were here when we did the show with him. It was called DougSavesYouMoney.com. Okay. And uh, he was um, he was telling me that um, he has this business where he calls up cable companies and internet companies and stuff like that and gets uh, make package reduced. And he might be able to get you a couple of credits with your company that which which possibly could save save our asses just by him making a phone call. Awesome. So um, he says that you can call him tonight at any time. So, but at the end of the show, I will give you his phone number in the in the in the chat area. Don't let me forget. Thank you. And um, and then um, hopefully that will be the solution that we need for tomorrow. I hope so. That would be freaking awesome. North Flat just texted me and said um, he's he's coming online here, but he said he can pony up fifty dollars for us. Thank you. Uh, yeah. yeah. Don't tell my old lady. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
God, thank you. I, I would give something too. It's just like I have fucking nothing right now, but um, I, I, I can, I can, I could strip at a club if you want me to, Casper. I don't, I don't know which one to do it at, but I would do it for time for him. I would go to a bar and take off all my clothes and have to pay me to put them back on. <laughs> <laughs> Dancing Bear always takes newbies. Yeah, but Oh really? <laughs> I, well, you know what? I, I'm not I'm serious. I'll I'll go I'll go to the dancing bear. I think that's for uh guys. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> oh, sorry. Well, <laughs> well if you do, give me a shirt. I like the dancing bear shirts. They got Jerry Bears dancing on poles. Jerry <laughs> Bears dancing on poles. All right, I'm going to have to add our guest to the conversation. Uh, did Terry let you know that I'm going to be disappearing at this point? <laughs> I, I didn't let them know, actually. Um, uh, Casper um, doesn't like our guest. Um, and, well, it's more than that. It's it's She used to be married to Bradical Russ, Belleville, and there's, like, tension and... and Apparently, like, she may have cheated. I mean, she cheated somebody with money I'll, that... I'll detail it real briefly. She okay. worked for Paul Stanford during a period of time and handled his books and his accounts. Uh, during uh, one one uh, quarter, she did not keep accurate track of his, of his taxes and actually threw out some of his receipts. Also, during that period of time, she was going through his patient records and calling his patients and telling his patients that she and some other people were opening a new dispensary and they should come and be their patients instead of being Paul's patients. Then she left Paul, and then after she left Paul, Paul found out that his taxes had not been filed properly, and so he had to go and fight the IRS. All right, Paul used to be one of Russ Belleville's biggest advertisers, and then Russ Belleville began to insult Paul Stanford on the air. So Paul Stanford quit adver advertising on Russ's show. Then about a year later, Russ took a shit in, in, the, in the internet and rebuilt his, his company. Out of the kindness of his heart, Paul Stanford had Russ Belleville on as a guest on Paul's TV show. And we were nice to, to Russ. And Russ asked Paul to be a guest on Russ's show, Russ's first guest. Paul went on to, Paul, Paul went on to Russ's show. And one of the very first questions out of Russ's mouth was, I understand you've been dodging the IRS and that you're under investigation for dodging taxes. Uh, how, how does that affect your, your work with the movement? I can people trust working with you, but they want to get things done with the marijuana movement. And then he said, uh -huh. you should ask your wife. Any chance Russ Belleville has, he's always given backhanded insults to me on the Internet. He's always found ways to try to insult me, put down my little radio show. And point out that he is the mouth of the marijuana movement. He is the voice of the marijuana movement. Even though I introduced him to my audience when he first came onto the scene and before he even had his first show. So that is why this evening I am just the board op and you will not be hearing from me. Because <laughs> I, if I can't say anything nice, I should never say anything at all. Well... Will you at least be on chat? Hello. Hi, Iva. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. <laughs> so um, we're, we're running a little bit behind. You know, it happens, but we're going to start yeah, start up here pretty soon. Okay, cool. So. So you're ready for tonight. Now, how long do you want me to stay on? Um, well, I mean, definitely for the first hour. Okay, um, cool. you know, and then, um, if, if you feel that you, you know, want to go from that point, that's fine. Um, okay. actually, I, I might, I could maybe see if Jason America wants to come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Imagine a town where there are no small joints, just small stoners, where Kush is the girl's best friend, and it all breaking is the new liberty. It's the Hollywood Hemptress Hour, hosted by your honey blonde Hemptress, Terry Joyce. Yeah. 
Hi, welcome to Hollywood Hemptress Hour. I'm Terry Joyce, uh, and I'm your host. Uh, this is the Time for Hemp Network, and we are on iHeartRadio. And uh, in studio, I have my co-host with me, uh, Kevin Korn. Uh, welcome back to the show, Kevin. Uh, he's from Hardcore Entertainment, and also um, our, sh- our 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 show Trips uh, cast member and producer, as well as North Blatt Forsgren, uh, too, is also co-hosting with me, and he is also creator and a cast member of Trips. So welcome back to the show, guys. Good evening, Madam Joyce. Oh, wow. I'm the Madam tonight. I love that. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) It's better than being the hooker, I suppose, you know? (laughs) Madam's kind of like pimp. (laughs) What was it? Um, Like, we we had that one band, um, uh, or or .com records, and, uh, you know, uh, the... um, what was it? It wasn't Travis. It was um, um, Stephen. Was like, you know, I'll uh, you just you're the bot, you're the master. You just tell me to play a song whenever I you want me to bring in, you know, say whatever you want. I'll do. It. I I felt kind of like I was like, well, I'm I'm getting kind of turned on. It's kind of like being a little bit of a dominatrix, a little bit, you know. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. Um, you know, I mean, it's kind of weird to be kind of in control of things, don't you think? I mean, it, or. See, I was laughing at that. See, as a woman, you understand that. You know, when you're a woman and you're dominant, you know, or you have, you're in control of a situation, whatever the situation is, or somebody's saying, like, I will be at your beck and call. I'll create at the at the moment that you tell me to. There's there's a little bit of, like, you know, there's a little bit of something going on there. Do you get tired of wearing the big girl panties all the time? You want somebody else to do it? Um, you know, well, I... I don't wear the big girl panties all the time, uh, but if, well, most of the time I don't wear panties. But <laughs> no granny panties. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, you know, sometimes my mom you know, takes me uh, bra shopping and stuff, you know, and underwear shopping. So she's a good mom. But one time, you know, she goes, "Oh, I'm going to get you some underwear." I'm like, "Great," you know. And um, she just pulled out these huge, huge underwears, you know. And I, I looked at her and I go, "Oh my God, that's hideous." And she goes, they're for me, you little asshole. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know. Um, I'm sure you are really comfortable. Yeah, yeah. You, well, I mean, it's, it, you know, let's talk about, like, I know this is, you know, we're supposed to talk about weed, but right now we're going to talk, talk about underwear. And, you know, it would be really great is if the underwear is made out of hemp. I would love, I would, I don't like G-strings. Okay, because one time I, it was like New Year's Eve, and I'm like, you know what? I'm not gonna like bring the New Year with something up my ass. I'm just not. <laughs> um, but it was if it was hemp, I would, I would, I would, I would, I would celebrate that way. Somebody should do a, a hemp lingerie line. There you go. Yeah. That would be sexy. There's so many different blends. It would be awesome. I yeah. I wear that. Of macrame. Well, I feel. Of macrame in my head. I feel like there's there's probably um uh, a uh, wait we somebody are we're live right somebody in the chat line just said we were uh, yo are live you are live yeah okay that was um, five minutes ago <laughs> <laughs> well I'm I'm glad somebody reminds I'm glad somebody told me that I was live <laughs> before I started it's weird I mean, sometimes I'm like you know sometimes because we're not all in the same studio you know and and we're in our own like, I'm, you know, in my place, and you guys are, you know, I don't know what, probably, uh, I think I think um, our board op is in his living room, and uh, Kevin's probably in his living room, and I don't know, where are you, North Platte? I'm in my office. Okay. So, you, oh, you yeah. have a, excuse me, like, the rest of us are just in living rooms and stuff, but you have an office. Yes, yeah, so I'm in my office. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, and Iva, where, where are you at? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is this is the new new radio. But since sometimes like you're just sitting here, it's it's kind of hard to tell whether you're on or not on sometimes. <laughs> but I'll get it down here pretty soon. What? Are we supposed to be wearing underwear right now? I don't know. I mean, I don't require underwear for the show. No. That's all I'm wearing. Well, I mean, we could be wearing anything if if we if we want to now see normally friday night is um is it's friday night lingerie night but uh but i didn't do that tonight so um yeah i didn't i didn't (laughs) i didn't get them yeah because you know i i've been um 
uh, live streaming the show behind the scenes, you know, just here, like people can look at my Ustream and look at me or I upload it. And then I, and I'm also, we're also broadcasting on time for hemp. So, um, you know, I, I kind of did a thing where I just thought maybe I, I might get more viewers if I wore lingerie. <laughs> so I, I created Friday night lingerie night and, um, you know, uh, it, it, you know, it's been working. I mean, you know, actually, I don't think, I, I think somebody popped on like one time so far tonight and um, on, you know, my first like lingerie night gets four or five viewers. So it, <laughs> it does, it does work. But now I think what I need to do now is turn it around and, and get a hemp company or like research for a uh, lingerie hemp company and then maybe get them to be sponsors and then I'll be wearing their lingerie. Bring back the uh, crocheted uh, bikini. That's, oh. that's what I was saying, macrame. Macrame bikini, okay. <laughs> I was thinking macrame, I think of the plants. Yeah, you know, the, the plant, uh, plant hangers, yeah. I, I'm, yeah. I'm not, and that's made out of, uh, isn't that jute? And that's really abrasive. I, I just can't see wearing a jute and hemp <laughs> crochet <laughs> or macrame bikini. No, me, me neither. Uh, but... So, uh, no anal flossers there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, I have a, this is a, we, 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 this is TBMA, so we can say whatever we want. Just oh, so. thank God. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to edit myself sometimes. No, no editing. You, anal is okay. It's not, it's not a problem. Um, well, all right. I'll whip out a few then. Well, you, you know. Yeah, hemp anal floss is fine. <laughs> hemp, hemp anal floss, you know. Put it, we're putting it out there, people. Come and create it for us. Anal hemp floss. We're ready for it. We want it. We want it. <laughs> right. So, um, just so everybody knows that the woman on the show that you're hearing is um, I, Iva Cunningham, and uh, you know you've you've been in the um, medical marijuana um, industry and uh, part of the movement. I know that there was like we were at the Seattle Hemp Fest um, a few years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I've only made That's it. A fun crowd. That's always a, a fun but exhausting event to go to. You have to take a break every now and then because it's 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 uh, it's brutal. Uh huh. It's it's absolutely brutal. I, I mean, I remember you know following Russ around on every single stage, and it's just you know it's that it, there's so many people. It's kind of like a ride at Disneyland. You take two steps, you wait. Take two more steps, you wait. And you feel like you're never going to get to your destination. Um, it's it's a crazy, exhausting event. Um, I've had to take a couple of years off just because I need a, a break from it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, now you you were you know um, you were married to Russ Bell Belleville, so who who did Normal Show Live and uh, mm -hmm. Daily Normal Audio Stash and mm -hmm. and also has 420radio.org. And right. uh, I had I've done I've worked with him several times. Um, well, I was like a regular on uh, Normal Show Live, like every other mm -hmm. Thursday. I gave the Southern California report, and I was even with him back when um, we were recording. Recording it through, I um, mean, you, you'd have that call line and the number to put through, and and oh, yeah, uh, yeah, it was yeah. pre-recorded. I mean, because because uh, Russ asked me to um, to uh, to do a segment back in, I believe it was 2007. It was after we had come up here and done the dope show at the Bag Dac, right. because I met uh, Russ and Kenny there that uh, and, right. and Madeline. Right. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I remember now. Yeah, yeah. I think that was the first time that I'd met you too. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that was a while ago. I mean, it just and then now look at us. You know, we're know. We're, we're still we, we're, we're veterans st now, Terry. I know, huh? <laughs> I know. It's it's funny, um, you know, to to look back, uh, you know, how far and how educated I, uh, you know, um, been because of this movement. You know, I didn't really know anything about hemp. I knew a lot about marijuana, but I didn't know much about hemp. And I've certainly learned a lot and and um, have a new respect for hemp. Um, and, and really a new passion for it because it, um, you know, it's it's multifaceted and in, 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 in the benefits and, um, uh, you know, why why it's illegal because of marijuana. I'm kind of babbling here. But, I, I mean, it kind of, um, when you start to learn about, you know, what hemp can do for um, the country and the fact that it's just illegal um, because marijuana is illegal, it's kind of a sad situation. 
It's it's definitely a, a sad situation, and it's one of those things that uh, I know I know for for myself um, when I started to get involved with um, marijuana, and it basically I, I yeah I got involved because I, I I someone said do you want to do a marijuana themed show? It was more like about doing a show. And, uh, and then it just happened to be that we were doing the show at that particular time in history. I mean, like we're, we're looking at, um, you know, uh, California, uh, 2007, um, a lot of the dispensaries were being raided and, uh, you know, and, you know, we were doing a show in Pasadena. So, uh, you know, Pasadena had closed their medical marijuana dispensaries down. And, and because of that, we had a reporter in the smaller room at the ice house, not the main stage and uh from the star news because they thought it was provocative that the ice house was doing a marijuana show and that's that was that particular you know time so crazy how far i mean you know now the the topic of of marijuana hemp is on the news it's it's a daily thing back then you it, you'd see a story occasionally, um, and like you were saying, it's, it was provocative. Um, I, you know, the marijuana logs was a big deal, and now it's like, oh, okay, that's just, you, you know, we've become kind of desensitized to because it it's it's just flooded our media. It's it's the it's the hot topic. Well, right now it is, and and we we've, we've actually been talking a bit about that, and and wondering like, you know, I, I'm kind of curious about. Um, where all that is going, actually, um, you know, I've I've made um, we've discussed how that you know they've um, you know I'm sure you've seen it um, you know they, they've associated Miley Cyrus with smoking at mm-hmm. that you know and and then there's also Lady Gaga's you know doing stuff and you know Madonna's making statements and you know you're you're seeing this sort of um, I don't know, uh, exposure of it that way, as well as, um, you know, Cheryl Schumann's been doing some really good work. Uh, oh, in, yeah, Cheryl Schumann's been knocking it out of the park. Yeah, in terms of bringing some really good um, uh, media to, you know, some information to mainstream media. Um, right. Yeah, and you know what? We do need to take a commercial break. We'll be right back with more Kevin Korn, Iva Cunningham, and North Flat Forsgren uh, on Hollywood and Hempers Tower. Stay tuned. Chatting with uh, Jason America for the moment. So the so the guy from the Dave's Bread lost it. Dave, yeah, he was fucking not nice. Killer Dave, what ape shit? Because his bread has too much gluten in it. Is that is that is it? Did I hear that right? Fucking gluten. So the seeds were in his bread. That's just you know what's horrible is that 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 place is really is kind of a cool place because they do hire like a lot of like uh, ex cons and stuff. Right. And they're outing him all over the news because of that they're like he's a three time felon and his empo- and he employs eighty percent of all other felons and they're like making him sound like he's a horrible guy because he I, does that all over the news. That's like he's just bad. got nothing but criminals working for him and he's this master bot. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to put our criminals to work. <laughs> no, I mean God forbid they make our bread. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think it's going to happen 
to the con- a company? Do you think it's 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 over for him now? I mean, can't he just like find a gluten free recipe? Hey, that's like a billion dollar company. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't see that. He'll, he'll probably get a little help from you know rehab or something. And he can he can join us tonight. Sweet. Cool. Okay. He's always fun. Yeah. Especially on camera. I know, huh? That's what I was trying to do the other night. You were getting pissed at me, so I stopped. What happened? Who? Who was? Huh? Who was getting pissed? Me? Oh, you were. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I guess Jason's coming on now. Hello. When did I, I get was, pissed? I was just holding up signs that said smoke more pot. You're like, I don't need to smoke more pot, Alex. You're too more oh, that one day when I was mad, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> I gotta look at, I, I, you know, that video's recorded. I mean, like, it's, it's, I need to look at it. It might be very funny. I might be able to take a clip out of that. I don't need to smoke more pot, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Hollywood Hempress Hour. Uh, I'm Terry Joyce, your host. Uh, Hollywood Hempress Hour is on the Time for Hemp Network on iHeartRadio. And uh, yes, and in studio, uh, I have North Flat Four Screen, Kevin Korn from Trips and Hardcore Entertainment. And we have Iva Cunningham, uh, who is uh, activist extraordinaire. Uh, so, <laughs> well, you know, you uh, we're going to go there because uh, you've you've created a, a new group, too, as well, um, and invited me to come be a part of it. And so I want to ask you about that in just a moment. But we were talking about, um, before the break, um, the Seattle Hemp Fest. And, uh, you know, the, um, and also we were talking about how the, our growth and understanding of, from being in the movement, from, you know, smoking marijuana to realizing uh, the um, hemp and then what a wonderful plant it is and how it could um, pretty much save the planet. Well, I think, you know, we, we kind of left off where you were saying, you know, uh, in 2007, you know, you were talking about being invited on the oh. show because your show was provocative. And, you know, it was provocative now, then, and now it's mainstream. And, um, you know, it, it really is a, a topic of everyday political conversation. Um, I, I, I see that more of the mainstream um, audience, if you will, is starting to realize that, 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 you know, what we've been screaming and yelling about for, for years is, you know, they're getting educated and they're, they're starting to come on board with our rationale that this isn't working. See, no, I, I don't really feel that way. Uh, totally. Um, in terms of now, maybe I, I it, if it's happened, then it's happened just super, super recently. Um, but uh, I, I have, as an entertainer, I have a bit, I've experienced um, some discrimination uh, in just like what you would consider like like my my work. Uh, for for example, and this this happened in um, Medford, Oregon. Uh, I was working a, a a venue, and the girl for the marketing took my little cartoon character rather than my headshot, which I thought was just kind of silly. Anyways, I wouldn't have made that choice, but. Um, and now she's going to know I just said that. <laughs> but <laughs> maybe, maybe not, whatever. <laughs> but uh, she took my, she took the, you know, little cartoon with the marijuana leaf, and they got so upset about it. Uh, the owner said, you know, you can't have that up on the window that way. And actually put a, um, they put like a fake, another type of little flower sticker on it. So I, the, the, the thing was like a cartoon of me with this, just this flower in my hair that they transposed That's... over it on every I took pictures of it and I put it I put it up on my Facebook and and uh, and people and people said blasphemy they were like <laughs> they were like, this is so, terrible you know I I just thought it was hilarious you know, so uh, you know. The venue managers just didn't they didn't 
like the pot leaf or they didn't like the feedback that they were getting from the community because of the pot leaf? No, he just automatically, he, it was, to my understanding, he didn't like the pot leaf. And it went, and the community didn't have anything to do with it. As a matter of fact, after the show, um, I, you know, I sat down and uh, somebody gave me, I, I could smell weed. I'm like, how come I smell weed? And then somebody had like, you know, rolled up a big fat joint and set it as a gift in front of me. So, uh, you know, the, the, um, the problems we have. yeah, I mean, you, you, you yeah, I mean, when you, other people live like, <laughs> you, well, you know, I, I understand that. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I certainly don't walk in, in that field, but I, I mean, I or in your shoes or, or, you know, your experience as an entertainer, you know, I've seen from afar, you know, some of that, um, but you know, for me, and I guess maybe I'm just a, a you know, an optimist, but, but I've always been. You know, I've always had one foot in mainstream and one foot in in this community. And, and um, you know, because I came from the corporate world, um, I've come from corporate healthcare. Um, you know, and I've been in healthcare for many, many years. And so I, I, that's more mainstream. But that's also where this movement, you know, of of, of really the pendulum in this movement started swinging in our direction was when we started talking about medical. Um, <clears throat> Now, I, I believe it should be more than that, obviously. Um, I, I don't think medical goes far enough. I don't think it protects the patients in the way that it should, and that's a whole other conversation. But what I do find, you know, and I've, I've you know, traveled across this country, and I have, you know, um, Republican friends. I have Christian uh, friends. I have Billy Graham followers. And the people I consider very mainstream, and even, you know, when I have conversations with them, I don't hide what I do. I don't hide my beliefs. But they're starting to see, you know, because I've been educating them, but they're starting to listen to what I'm saying, and, and, and they're getting on board, and they're educating their friends. And, you know, and the one thing that I always think is really easy for people to think about is when we talk about our kids, save the kids, you know, what about our children? And, um, you know, well, yeah, what about our kids? If you really care about our kids, you'll, you'll end this bullshit prohibition because it just makes it easier for your kids to get it. And that means that they are also exposed to everything that's out there. So do you want them to, you know, what do you want them to have access to? You know? Right. And, well, they have access to, to it now anyways. Right, I exactly. mean, so what's going to change if it's got, legalized? Right. Well, once it's, once it's, you know, we have, you know, more regulation and more oversight to, to um, limit the access by minors unless they are patients registered or, you know, uh, legal patients, um, then I think that it's 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 going to be more difficult for kids to get it. it. There's the incentive for the black market to be there. Um, I, I believe I, maybe I you know like I said I'm an optimist. I believe will start to um, decline because the access is easier to get at a dispensary. I don't know about you, but growing it's a pain in the ass. I've tried to grow and I'm miserable at it, and I don't want to. I don't have the time. I don't have the interest. <laughs> I mean, like talking about it, but. Honestly, I, I couldn't grow up. I, I could barely keep a house plant alive. Um, it's, but, you know, I, I like the idea of going to a dispensary and know that the product that I'm purchasing, I get to look at, smell, taste, you know, maybe sometimes sample. But I, I, you know, I get to see it. It's tangible. It's not, you know, me calling a guy and hoping I get something that's not light, it's not taint, that's not, you know, um, that's organic. And, you know, I like that. And I think most people do. And I think they would prefer to do that than. You know what we used to do meet somebody in a dark parking lot well isn't that what america's all about is having choices right that's exactly. what i like about it that's my favorite part exactly. I, have a, I have a fucking menu you know right exactly i like going in you know i like knowing that the safety is is already taken care of but i like going there and go you know what i want some indica i want some tea, sativa i want some of that oh hey i haven't tried this oh what's that that's interesting you know what i might have a headache i'd like to pick up some capsules you, you know what i mean yeah I mean, having choices is to me is more freedom than trying to call a guy who might know a guy i mean we've all done this everybody who smokes pot today knows what i'm talking about right um, but i think the dispensaries um will limit, you know, access by minors, um, and it also, you know, hopefully take out some of the, um, oh, I don't know how to say it, but, you know, that scourge that exists, you know what I mean? Um, the guy that that's, doesn't care what he sells you, it doesn't, you know, care if it's safe, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I mean, um, so you're saying that the guy that, yeah, you know, that, that it's not... like the pot I got right now, it's fucking horrible. Found a 
a, a bag, a, a paper bag in one of his desks from the 80s. And uh, he brought it in today and he's all here. What? <laughs> like, what? And he said, yeah, this is what we used to smoke back when you were a kid. have choices now um that you can go into a dispensary and get you know medicine or whatever you need or now that it's legal now, as, as, now that it's legal in washington and colorado i think it's going to be interesting to find out how they sell it to it for recreational use like are we going to have cafes where you just go in and and pick a jar and you know have different strains and capsules i mean where where can like this go them. yeah you know, I'd like to see that. I'd like to see, you know, instead of, you know, so many bars. And don't get me wrong, I, you know, I, I, I partake in, in medical alcohol. Um, <laughs> but me too. I, 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 um, I would like to be able to go into a lounge. I, I mean, I don't know if you've been to, like, the Cannabis Cafe. And I have. Places. I, you know, I kind of like that atmosphere. I'm not saying, you know, that I always want to do that. Sometimes I just want to go get my stuff and go home. Uh -huh. but, you know, when socializing, it's so much more, it's so much nicer to socialize in an atmosphere where people are just smoking pot as opposed to drinking alcohol. That's my personal preference. Oh, me too. Uh, I agree. Totally yeah. agree. And the Cannabis Cafe, uh, you know, the WFCC is pretty much like, you know, the leader. And I've noticed that a lot of... Uh, newer dispensaries that are opening here because I'm in Portland as well mm -hmm. and they're everywhere they're like you know one opens they're like McDonald's they're on every block at this point I and know I know a lot of them are like uh clubs like clubhouses you can go yes. in and hang out and they have entertainment um you know some have bands some have comics doing shows um I mean oh, they're there are lounges. There already are lounges. What I, I love is that they still call them medicating, um, you know, uh, access points. And I think that's funny because I don't go anywhere to take my Oxycontin. I kind of want to take that. <laughs> but, you know, but, but, but I do like that atmosphere because if I, you know, sometimes, I, you know, I don't want to always socialize at home. Sometimes I want to go out and I want to socialize. And I like that, you know, I can go in there and I can get, you know, really top shelf bud. Um or, you know, others, you know, Keith hash, which, you know, is lovely, um, and, and socialize with friends in a casual atmosphere. I like that. And, and to be entertained, to see a comedian or to see a band, I mean, who, it's just, it's, for me, it's just more ideal than going to a bar. Agreed. I agree. But I do say, there's a place in Seattle, I believe they're called Frankie's, and they do have a smoking lounge I, um, on one of their, the other floor is an actual bar. Ooh. Now that yeah. Helps. You know what's really cool about that whole thing is, is that they they really want what they're trying to do is get you to stay, um, because they don't you know because they don't want you pulled over after leaving that place. I'm sure. Right. You know, and, and so what what's kind of neat is seeing that kind of that kind of mindset of, of of trying to get people to stay there, without it being, um, like a casino without without any like a. a, a real uh, negative aspects on it, you know, like, like a casino wants you to stay because they want you to spend your money, right? So they right. take out all clocks, 
there's no windows. It takes an hour to get to the fucking door. You know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Uh, but, 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 but pot clubs, you know, I mean, it, it, it's, it's just kind of a real chill atmosphere. There's not a lot of advertising. There's not a lot of fucking... Well, sometimes it's just like you see like a green, a green cross, like you know, in front of a, in front of a, a building. You go, okay, there's one. Yeah. Um, but in California, it, it's not, I have a feeling that it's a lot more casual up here, like, you know, entertainers and people, and we've got a nice little place for you to medicate at, and, you know, uh, all this kind of stuff, but, I mean, there's been versions of that in, in Los Angeles, but Los Angeles has been, like, really a battleground, uh, in terms of, you know, them being able to stay open and, you know, the, the different city zonings and, you know, Eagle Rock's been a, you know, the, uh, certain cities wanting to shut them down themselves. And, and it, it, it's, it's, I, it's funny because now I'm living up here and it just, I feel a lot more relaxed and we're having conversations like this where I know that, um, my friend Dejay, um, Kuti, who's like, uh, the president of the patient advocacy network, she's, I know that, you know, there she's, they're constantly, you know, fighting and, you know, petitions and legality and, you know, defending people, dispensary owners that are on trial still. I mean, there's a, yeah. Yeah, I mean it's 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 rough down there. And what and why I wonder why that is. You know, I don't know. I think sometimes um, I think California, it, you know, it was the testing ground for um, legalization, at least for medical. Um, but I think that a lot of people have already had this attitude, like, why do we want legalization when we have this medical? And and really, in the law, um, you know you can have a scratch that's causing you some irritation because it's, you know, and get a card because it's really for any need, any need um, deemed necessary by the physician. So you really have, you know, you know, people walking around with this, you know, false sense of security that it's legal. But um, I, I think, you know, I've seen California, the, the pendulum swing in the direction of us and then kind of swing back and there's some backlash coming just because I think that the program has been too liberal, but, you know, the zoning laws have been this loophole for, you know, our opponents to come in and, and, and swing that pendulum back the other way. You know, it's, it's going to be an arm wrestle for a long time. Um, and these little issues, like not little, these, these issues will be ones that, you know, will be small battles that we have to try to win and overcome. Um, I know here in Portland, I, I don't know, they're, they're, they're uh, working on the dispensaries, uh, uh, writing up the rules um, for the dispensaries now. Uh-huh. And so I think that that's also an anticipation of legalization coming here in Oregon, probably in the next um, election cycle, at least I hope. So they're not really, are there, I mean, are there dispensaries here yet or what, what are, what, or in, not? In Washington? No, I mean in, 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 in Oregon. Oh, there's like, well, safe access points. I think that's what they've chosen to call themselves. Okay. Uh, I, I, the last I counted... Or, or I was told to count, I should say, there was over 280. <laughs> and when he sense. says, when they, when, um, I think it was Norflat, when, Norflat, when they was saying that they're like Starbucks and McDonald's, they truly are. I, I mean. It was like that in L.A. too. They, they cleared a lot of it out. Um, that was yeah. a big joke. That, that well, They said that there was more medical marijuana dispensaries than Starbucks. I've seen so many of them. Like, any time a place, like, goes out of business and the building goes up for lease, within a week it's turned into a unsafe access. Yeah. You guys, you know what? We need to take a really um, – I'm sorry I'm going to interrupt, but we got to take a commercial break. We'll be right back. your pot do you hunt and peck a lot and look where you just looked before in the corner of the desk in the very same drawer do you go back and forth like a mapped out course and check every place that you just now retraced and look where you just looked before in the corner of the desk in the very same drawer do you check every pocket as the clock is tick tocking and your brain is all locked up, so chalk up another look like you just looked before in the corner of the desk in the very same drawer. Do things keep getting worse as you verbalize and curse? 
orders the manufacturers of the couch as you rip the cushions out and slide a hopeful hand down in the depths of the divan. Then sneak a peek underneath on your belly on the floor and then you stop to ask yourself, what the hell am I looking for? And then you snap I'm not like sure a track if I and ever you get back this. on track and you look where you just looked before in the corner of the desk in the very same drawer. Do you slip on your slippers and zip up your zippers and scratch your head as you look in your car in the tray down the seat, then a quick repeat, then a fast retreat to look where you just looked before in the corner of the desk in the very same drawer? Do you sit down and ponder as your mind starts to wander? Did I leave it over yonder so you rush and look where you just looked before in the corner of the desk in the very same drawer? Do you say, hell, I give up? It's lost, and that's just too damn tough. Where the hell did I put that stuff? So you decide you look just once more in the corner of the desk in the very same drawer. And you find it. And you are reminded of what you were supposed to remind yourself before. That you put your pot away. Neath a zigzag rolling tray in the back of the desk in the very same drawer. It happens with car keys, too, you know. <laughs> I'm not a doctor, but I've seen one on TV. I love that guy. No one is immune from everyday aches and pains. But what about the times you've caused the pain yourself? You've hit your thumb with a hammer. You've stepped on a rake. You've slammed your head in the car door. Again. Now, for the extra pain caused by doing something incredibly stupid, there's new Imbecile. Only Imbecile provides fast relief from the special pain of being a mindless clod. Imbecile. Because it hurts to be a jerk. Also, try Imbecile Jr. President George Bush. Or Justice Clarence Thomas. Many famous Americans, Vice including President prominent Trump. conservatives, Office have used Trump. marijuana. None were arrested, Amen. and all have lived successful lives. President Bill Clinton, Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger. Is it fair to arrest three quarters of a million people Governor a year for doing what presidents and a Supreme Court justice have done? Visit the Marijuana Policy Project Foundation, www.joinmpp.org, or call toll-free 1-877-JOIN-MPP. Time for Hemp is an educational tool that can be found in iTunes, on Spreaker, and of course, at timeforhemp.com. Well, and we're back with Hollywood Hemper Sour on the Time for Hemp Network on iHeartRadio. Did somebody drop something a moment ago? <laughs> it was kind of whoa. Okay, uh, I um, you know, Iva, you, I, I want to ask you a question about the um, women's group that you've just started. Uh, you started and uh, formulated a new women's uh, social uh, women's co coalition. Right, uh, I am forming it currently. Um, we're uh, writing the um, the bylaws, and I am um, filing the paperwork for a super PAC. Um, and it's called the Women's Coalition for Social Change. Um, what, you know, as we were talking earlier, I wanted to bring, you know, more of the mainstream women in, but I also wanted to educate more women. Um, I wanted to celebrate the women that are in the movement. There's a lot of women out there working their ass off for this movement, and um, I wanted to bring attention to them, but I also wanted to invite them to share their um, um their knowledge and their education, you know, there's a lot of women that's traveling through the country. A lot of women would come up to me and say, oh, how, what do I do? How do I get involved? I've got my children. I've got this. I've got that. Um, and you know, there's like, there's no way I'm going to join a group that has marijuana in it, it, you know, and they're just, they support us, but they're afraid. Um, so they want to get involved. But so I wanted to find a, you know, create an outlet for those women to be able to, um, you know, learn how to, you know, approach, you know, their elected officials, um, you know, what do they need to do to get organized? How do they organize people in their community? Those kinds of things. But I also wanted to invite um, more mainstream groups like CPAC and uh, National Organization for Women and some of those to, to also get involved in this issue because, you know, the drug war, um, 
It's unintended consequences is really uh, entered in, in almost every aspect of our, our society. Um, it's a barrier to health care. It's a barrier to um, employment. It's a barrier to safe housing. Um, I mean, I could go down the list, and this is all related to the drug war and why it's really important to end the drug war. But I think that more mainstream women, um, you know, as much as what they'd like to get involved, they don't yet quite see you know, how um, um, immersed the failure of the dread drug war is into our, you know, to many of our social uh, problems. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, you know, so the Women's Coalition for Social Change is really just an open forum for, um, you know, many of those women's groups that are out there existing today, but also, you know, as a, as a, a place to educate and um, um, motivate women to get more involved in a lot of the social issues that we have going on currently. I, I love it. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm excited to, um, I mean, like you've invited me to become, you know, go to a meeting and become a part of it. And, uh, I'm, I'm yeah. looking forward to, um, to see how it, 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 um, unfolds. Um, I find that there's a lot of women, uh, I know in the, in the, in the marijuana movement, very strong, powerful women. And they, they, they're really, um, they, they are, they, I don't, I don't want to put the men down, but um, they're really taking care of business. Oh, yeah. Look at yeah. Kim Russell in Florida. Look at Sharon Rafford in Georgia. Look at Cheryl Schumann. Look at you. Look at, um, I mean, I'm... I, DJ I'm, Couty is, is, yeah, is really... Yeah, exactly. I'm, thank you. I, you know, there's so many women out there that are busting their butt, and, you know, they need more support, and, you know, and... Um, they need to be, you know, em embraced and, and, um, and, and uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, promoted, I guess. Um, and, and, you know, this is what I'm trying to do is to, to give a platform for those women that are working their butt off to maybe give them some help. Maybe, you know, um, find somebody else in their community to patch the torch on to. Um, or, you know, ever, who doesn't like a partner to help you get shit done? And, and that's just kind of what I wanted to provide. And the Super PAC is really just to, um, you know, Moms for Marijuana. There's a lot of groups out there that are just struggling to get by. These are women's groups. And, these, you know, they're just struggling to get their message out there. And the Super PAC is just a way to kind of, like, be a united, united way fund to help some of those organizations get off the ground and, um, and you know, really uh, implement their mission. Great. That that sounds really, really, really wonderful. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, I did. Go ahead. I like women and weed. <laughs> that was a. That was Jason America, and I, I've, been, I've been looking for a good time to bring him in on uh, on the on the show. Actually. Um, well, originally I asked for you to come on at one o'clock, but then they called you earlier, and I'm like, oh my god, okay. <laughs> and I can see you over in the little box over there. I mean, I mean, I don't even mean like you know how you're on Skype and you you know, and I could see his box, you know. I mean, <laughs> Jason America, and I'm like, I got to bring him on at some point, and then you know, every once in a while I hear a cough or I'm like, oh, <laughs> like I know he's there. So thank you for for coming in tonight at the last minute. We really appreciate it. I'm sorry, my box is so exposed. <laughs> <laughs> That's your live audience, Terry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because um, when I he he likes because uh, there's a signal when I'm broadcasting and it goes on my Facebook, and I noticed that he did a like on it, and I was like, oh, thank you, and I responded to it, and then, uh, and then I went back to that thread and go, hey, when, when Iva, when you said I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not, I might not be able to stay for the whole show, I go, well, then I'll, let's bring Jason America on, and then I wrote on the thread, do you want to come in at one o'clock, and then he said, I, I saw you stay, like, you were watching us, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was, and because I, I did see there was one viewer, and then I saw the viewer leave, and then it, and it was you. That's so funny. Well, you know, I get, as, as soon as I started getting feedback from the other one, that, uh, the, the the show on the on the podcast, or I'm sorry, the live feed from video and and audio is totally off by a few seconds, and so if they kick on both at the same time, it's like it acid flashbacks of the worst kind. <laughs> I've never had an acid flashback. I feel cheated. 
Oh, I've, I've never really had one either. I, it's almost like saying you haven't had an orgasm, huh? <laughs> So, I mean, Kevin, have you, but I don't, I, I, I think now having an acid flashback, that's not supposed to be like a pleasant thing. No, that's like, that's like if you did two months or something. What? You were like taking it to get the flashback, like it's like the extra something that is. I mean, like, like I mean, I I always thought that like like I guess maybe I watched too many seventies like drug movies or something, but you know, it, That's you, like it's the Tootsie Roll Center is what they're saying. I didn't know it was something that you were like like striving to attain. I I always thought it. You take the acid to get to to get the hallucinations, right? And, and to actually get the hallucinations without the acid later, I mean, that, that, that would be perfect. That would be great. But there's, there's you know, because there's always that guy in college that took too much acid, and he was been there for like eight years, and then he's kind of just a little bit off, and they go, he took too much acid. You're like, oh, okay. Like, he can't stop having flashbacks, you know? Like, I didn't want to be that guy. That guy scared me. What? Didn't we use right, the acid? I was in college, you didn't take enough. I was in college. I feel like I totally missed that boat of, of taking LSD in college. Well, I, I did. I community college, and it was really frowned upon. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but not as form a community at the community college, it turns out. <laughs> You know, my community college experience is weird. I took like video production and stuff, and and uh, we had we had like a, a serious clique of, of like the cool kids. But like just that just cracks me up. Like, exclusivism, and like and so at a community college, like I mean, like oh, they're from the community college. <laughs> <laughs> Were you like the kids? kids? You just break out in song, but you just break out your cameras. I think I break out in acne and hives. <laughs> I get acne in weird places now, like my side. Like, why do I get a pimple on my side? Why is it there? It was LSD. Like, my <laughs> There's your ass flashback, Jason. <laughs> Seriously, my, my, the best flashback I get is when I leave a mirror on the, on the ground, and it's like, whoa, look at that. So I uh, I wanted I wanted to get back to Iva for just a little bit because we're only gonna have her for like maybe a couple more minutes. Um, is there is there a website that um, that that anybody can go to or how can they find you? Let's say that there's a group out there or or a woman out there that's um, a marijuana activist or she's you know just an activist about something. Um, where would they um, contact there you? There is. It's, it's actually it's so funny that you should say that because I just I'm just now putting the website together. Like I said, we're just newly forming this and writing the rules of this point um uh, i have got a website domain and all that stuff but i have not it's not published yet um but i will post that on your page as soon as that is um you can um the facebook page is going to go out this week um hoping to drum up some more women and then um the twitter accounts at uh um women uh for the number four social change um um, and that's about the only one that I have out there right now. But yeah, like I said, we're still forming it and putting it together. We're we're looking for, um, you know, quality board members uh, to to really push this forward and um, um, you know women that want to be committed at this level. Um, but that's asking a lot too. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm not, I'm I'm actually um, a board member on uh, the Patient Advocacy Network. Um, so, but I mean, I, I that's. I mean, there's different levels of, of involvement, but, you know, it, it, it's it's almost like really committing to a job, really, in many Sometimes, ways. Sometimes, yeah, yeah. It depends on the board, mm. but it, it absolutely is. And, and and I don't want it to be like that, um, you know, but um, unfortunately, a lot of, um, you know, activists find, you know, what they what they, what they think is, you know, going to be just a part-time, you know, volunteer, I'll do it for a few hours a week, it ends up becoming... Um, 
you know, a life's passion. Yeah, and yeah. Taking over, yeah. It definitely does. Um, I would agree with that. So, well, Iva, you know, thank you so much for coming onto the show and, uh, you know, and, and playing with us for a little bit. And, uh, you know, we wish you well. And, uh, you. you know, I know we live in each other, so I'm pretty sure we're probably going to hang out and smoke out pretty soon. So I hope so. I yeah. hope so. I'm really looking forward to seeing you uh, putting in some FaceTime with you, Joyce. Um, um, anytime. Um, I'm happy to do it. The show's great. I've really enjoyed it. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. And uh, we'll be right back after this commercial. <clears throat> THC in it, and there's one plant that had the THC, but you're ba- you're basically okay. saying it, it, it the difference is how it's grown. Correct. That's correct. And there is Brutitella, and Brutitella supposedly has a lower amount of THC, but it still contains THC, and in fact, they're actually using that now in a lot of hybrids instead of Indica, so they're doing a lot of, like, indispensaries. They're selling you a lot of Sativa Brutitella hybrids. All right, we're coming back here in about uh, one minute. Oh, can I do a joke? Sure. Right, this is a, a, a retake of an old Suffy Tucker joke. I'm making it my own. I will never forget it, you know. The doorbell rang the other day, and I answered it, and there was a delivery boy there with two pounds of marijuana. He handed it to me. I opened it up, and it said, this is for Terry, and you're supposed to give it to her because I love her. So when I saw Terry, I said, here, Terry. Your boyfriend said, this is your two pounds of marijuana, and he gave it to you because he loves you. And Terry said, oh, great. Now I got to spend the next two weeks with my legs spread apart. Said, oh, come on, Terry. Can't you just put it in a plastic bag? <laughs> <laughs> Mule that shit. Uh, 
Sour uh, on the Time for Hemp Network. Uh, in studio, we have Kevin Korn and North Flat Forsgren uh, with uh, Trips and Hardcore Entertainment, uh, and also Jason America. Uh, we're rounding out. Yay, Jason America! Uh, and uh, you're like, I, I introduced you well last time. Um, pinball Wizard, Extraordinaire, uh, our, our, our singer. I called you a Renaissance man. Like we'll just say, just, just say, we'll just say next time. Every time you come on, we'll just say Jason, Jason America, marijuana Renaissance man. Every time I make up something new, like, like uh, last week, Jason was working with uh, genetics and discovered a new species of Malamute. <laughs> okay. So the dog. <laughs> That's right. The lawyer. <clears throat> Chihuahuas. Chihuahuas. So we were discussing, uh, we always have great conversations with commercials. It's too bad. Um, <laughs> everybody misses out on it, but we're going to um, recap it. Kevin suggested uh, that um, it would be a good idea to talk about um, the different, um, the confusion of, of what uh, what the plant is all about. Like what the, whether it's a sativa, what's a sativa, what's an indica. Uh, you know, uh, what, what's hemp, what's, what's marijuana, what's cannabis. I mean, marijuana is a slang word. I mean, let's just get into that, a little bit of that conversation. <laughs> yeah, you know, I saw this, uh, interesting, uh, you know, thing on Facebook that somebody had posted about them being in school and, um, were learning about hemp and, uh, cannabis that day. And they were really interested in the different plants and how they were different plants. And that sparked a ton of controversy on this thread. And I saw was reading it, and it seemed to me that there was just a lot of people really didn't know the difference between hemp, cannabis, and marijuana. And it was just really awkward. And, it, and, and as I read on, I started to realize I'm not sure if I knew correctly what it was. Because everybody has their idea, you know. But I'm not sure, you know, if, if it's correct. I wasn't sure if it was correct. I started second, you know, guessing myself. So uh, I went and looked into it and found the science on it, and it turns out that I was way off. Um, you know, I thought they were different plants, too. It turns out they're not. Um, cannabis is the species, and they have three different genomes, sativa, indica, and rudatella. Um, rudatella does contain less THC. However, it still contains THC, and, and it's grown proper just like any other pot. It can get you high. And as it turns out, marijuana is just a made-up word that was used as a slang word to demonize it. Um, when they started the drug war, because if they would have said that they were going to outlaw hemp, it probably they probably would have had a harder time doing it. Well, also, it, 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 they called it marijuana because they wanted because they were it was a racist thing, it's and they were they were they were blaming it on the Mexicans. They wanted the Mexicans, and they were saying, "Well, the Mexicans brought it in. It's this marijuana weed from the Mexicans. So let's get rid of them and the weed. Let them go back to where they yeah." So. What marijuana? I like to say marijuana. <laughs> marijuana. But then I found out hemp. Really, it's not a different plant. It can be any one of the three genomes of, of cannabis, and and it can contain THC. But it's really in how it's grown and how it's cultivated. If it's if you grow them really close together in, a, in an area and you keep them tightly close together, they will always fight for sunlight. You know, to always strive to be the tallest. So they get real tall and they never butter flower. And that's where you get hemp because you get majority of the plant is all stock and for the fibers you make hemp, right? Well, if you were to take those same plants and separate them and grow them 
further apart so they had to each have their own plot in space, then they would never have to fight for sunlight and they would grow tall and bud and flower and that's where you get your smokable marijuana. Or, or your smokable cannabis, I should say. <laughs> yeah, right? So that's where you get your smokable cannabis. So it, 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 really, it really doesn't matter on the plant. It's just all in how you grow it. That's interesting. You know, I did not know that until tonight. I was I was really under the impression that there was like two different kinds of plant. I mean, they were in the same. I thought they were in the same family, but the one. Right. There's three. They're all in the same family, and there's three of them. It's sativa, indica, and rudatella. And everyone thought rudatella didn't contain THC, but that's not true. It does. And in fact, a lot of hybrids you get in dispensaries right now are sativa rudatella hybrids. I happen to like hybrids, actually, right. uh, personally. I mean, uh, you know, it, because it's, it's kind of in between. It's not... Uh, it's just, what? Hybrids make great sandwiches. Great, great pets. What'd you say, to, what'd you say um, Casper? Hybrids make great sandwiches. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I asked Killer Day. I was just uh, wondering when that was coming. <laughs> I mean, we had, what, the, the thing I think I saw about him today that was most interesting was uh, 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 Chris Tenson, who's a, uh, I believe he's Oregon Hemp Works or something. Yeah, Chris Ten I know him, Chris Tenson. Yeah, he, he posted that um, he saw a speech where, you know, uh, Dave, Dave had spoke and, and spoke kind of not against marijuana so much, but said he didn't like it. He didn't like the way it made him feel, but then he spoke positively about pharmaceuticals. And we've, you know, every time I've been on, we've talked about, you know, how much we all fuck the pharmaceutical manufacturing machine, right? Yeah. But, uh, nope, you know, I've been the pharmacist a couple of times. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I remember I, I had a teacher, uh, in, in high school that was, a, he was a brilliant man. He's Macedonian, and his name was Carl Tricot. He was he, just a brilliant motherfucker. He coached college basketball, I believe, at Missouri, and then uh, stepped down from that to, he, he came to our high school, the county met high school in Gary, Indiana, and he taught there for, I think, like 25, 30 years or something, but it's a, the, the, uh, it's a shithole, basically. And to, to capture any student's attention at that school was completely difficult, but nobody fucked around in his classes. But he was just a freaking genius of a man. And he would tell us every time he taught health, but, it, you know, he'd catch somebody, like, writing on their hand or something, and he's a really spaz, you know, energetic guy. He'd get in your face and be like, hey, kid, kid, look at that, look at that, you see that right there? Every time you put something on your skin, your skin soaks it in and it comes in your bloodstream and it becomes part of you. It changes your body chemistry. Everything you do changes your body chemistry. And there we go. You know, like, like the, the things uh, you put into yourself, like, it, it, you know, the neurons and receptors and all these fun things, like, you're, you're rewiring shit. Well, just and think about how much we're getting re rewired, though, right now. Right. Completely rewiring motherfuckers, and that's that's where it starts to get scary. You see people, you know, flipping the fuck out out of the blue, and you, know, you think that's that's what's happening to this 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 bread Dave guy who what's his name again? I, I, I'm see, I I'm I'm not really. I mean, I just had the bread a couple his times. His last name is Bread, and his middle name might be Killer. Okay, yeah, Dave, a Killer, Killer Dave's Killer Bread. Okay. I, I, honestly, I do not know. I don't know enough. I don't know if he had any kind of relapse or anything like that, but. But oh, so you think he he had a, he's he's having an it, it's a drug it's a pharmaceutical drug reaction. I think it was spun out of his gourd is what I think. One of those, either one, I will I will take as a as a, I would I would not say it's in, uh, something that wasn't possible. I saw his mugshot this morning. The guy looked like he was tweaking. He got arrested. Oh uh, yeah, he got arrested. He did? I'm going to say, I don't know the whole story about what happened. What happened? He straight ran into, like, uh, like, like first, like, they, they, he flipped out, obviously, at his, at, at, at Dave's Killer Bread. Uh-huh. Which he was already had a, re re a restraining order against right. him. Police were already looking for him. They found him somewhere in, like, a parking lot. 
and he was in his car, and he saw him coming, and he's in a big, like, SUV, so he just took out the cops if they could even, like, get near him. He just rammed them with his car. Boom, boom. Took them out, and then, like, he, and then they, uh, he took a third one out somewhere else, like, during the chase, and then he almost got away, and then they found him, and then two other cop cars got smashed, like, trying to, they literally had to, like, hit him head on, and then hit him from behind. And they smashed him between the cars. Yeah, so he ended up smashing five cop cars total. Injuring three cops, too. Injuring three cops. Jesus, uh, I didn't, did, did this happen today? Yes. I had no idea this happened. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Okay, now it all, now it makes sense to me. So there, I mean, I, I thought maybe he just had a tantrum at the at the plant or something and got caught on camera or whatever, well, but no, this is... That's what his lawyer will say. Uh-huh. <laughs> so... That's how it started, though. It's, he, he went in there. They already had a, a, a restraining order on him at his own company. Okay, Dave's Killer Bread had a fucking restraining order on him already. He went in there and started flipping the fuck out, like beating up one of his cardboard signs of himself and calling people fucking losers and just all kinds of shit. Um, that, that's according to uh, the to the uh, K2, you know, news thing. So who knows? It's mainstream media. But oh, like, so yeah, he's just kind of turn. basically lost it. And, uh, wow. I had no idea. I... Yeah, pretty funny. It's a pretty funny story because, you know, I, you know, I grew up in you know, the same place, you know, where Dave's Killing Bread is. And, um, I, you know, I, everybody knows who he is. You know, and I, you know, it's not, you know, like we all know who he is. Um, and, you know, and they're, make, they're demonizing him right now. I mean, you know, I'm, not, I'm not saying whatever he did, whatever his reasons are, I'm not condoning him. But for his actions... But at the same time, they're they're demonizing him for the good stuff that he does do. They're basically going that well, he's a three-time felon, and then he did this, and he opened this, and he hires all these criminals, and uh, and most of his company are criminals too. Like he's running this huge criminal organization out of Dave's Killer Bread, like they're the mafia or something. You know, they're selling bread, <laughs> and he does. He does take a lot of people that get out and can't find jobs and can't get work. He does hire them and gives them employment, which I think is a, a well, when I heard the Dave, the Dave's Killer Bread story, um, you know, it, it was always like, oh, he's like this great guy, and you know, he 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 gave other prisoners a chance to like have it to be able to be integrated back into the world again, um, which is which is difficult. And again, you know, uh, this is good to talk about because um, you know, I get what one in ten people in America are incarcerated or something like that. I'm, I think I read a, a statistic like this. I mean, like we are living in a time where we're being locked up, and we're actually specifically, you know. How many people are locked up over marijuana right now? What's scarier is one in three of those go back. Yeah, because they can't integrate anymore. Correct. So, um, so this whole this whole meltdown um, and and everything makes the whole makes kind of takes away the 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 hope of the fact that you can have something good happen and prisoners can you know make good bread and you know run a business and be integrated. Now this guy who this is running just fine. Business runs great. Right, no, but business is awesome. their business and the bread is awesome. They're doing just fine. I mean, this guy's not actually in there making the bread or making the decisions anymore. I can tell okay. you. Okay. <laughs> We've gone in there and seen how much that fucking bread is. It's criminal. We have enough of his mustache hair in our food. It's great bread. I mean, it's <laughs> really, really good bread. For robbery. I wish I had some hey, of that bread now. I ain't coming into this bread store. Hell, you might as well put a gun on my face as much as you're charging me for this shit. <laughs> I, I, I bought a fucking, I brought, bought a cinnamon dog. It was one of these fucking dog log fucking bread things. Really, really good shit. But the motherfucker was eight bucks a loaf. No, kidding. Like, no, kidding. What? Every time I go in there, it's like, all I can say is, please, please, just leave me enough for the bus. Leave me enough for the bus. Don't hurt me. <laughs> So I heard Jason, you 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 made some postings um, on Facebook about um, your mayonnaise mayonnaise sandwiches. <laughs> I went I went you know and, and the, the other night like I I was really hungry and you you posted it and you were like saying about this whole story about how people criticized you for having mayonnaise sandwiches and I've been victimized. Yeah, but it, you made me want to eat one though. I was like, fuck, that I'm sounds kidding. good. I'm, 
I'm eating cheese and mayonnaise right now as we speak because of Jason America. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate this that. This is in honor of Jason America. I'm eating cheddar and mayonnaise right now. I oh, love God, it sounds so I'm good. I'm rubbing mayonnaise on myself and hoping it soaks in. <laughs> <laughs> like a, a nice paragraph on, you know, the history of the mayonnaise sandwich and, you know, how you, you were poor. You know, did you make it up or was it real? I mean, oh, you, no, it is all, it, well, the only thing that's made up about it is that my wife's a, a bully and that I'm a victim of people picking on me and my mayonnaise sandwich love, you know? Like, you know, it's, I thought that was funny to, to play the victim card. Like, I've been bullied too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> chips in between I called it a potato chip sandwich and it was starch on starch on starch and I would go and watch dark shadows on TV and eat potato chip sandwiches and I could not tell you why I had pimples and 20 extra pounds <laughs> dark shadows I haven't heard about of that in a long time dark shadow oh yeah Clinton Collins was a really hot werewolf <laughs> sandwiches myself but like you, uh, the, you know you're really stepping it up when you put ramen noodles on mayonnaise and bread oh you don't do that till you go to college then you get a high salute you guys went to college <laughs> 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 Take a commercial break, no, roll back, real quick, you're and you're bullying me into a commercial. Yeah, I am. I'm bullying. Start the commercials, fuckers. All right, I will. I will. I will. I will. Come on, what kind of fucking board op are you? Put the fucking commercial on. Seems like a year, watching making connections, city leave me 
chatting. Uh, welcome back to Hollywood Hempress Hour on Time for Hemp uh, on iHeartRadio. Uh, we have Kevin Korn, North Flat Force Grin, and Jason America, and also Casper Leach is here, too, who is Mr. Time for Hemp. Uh, and uh, we were, uh, a little, I guess we were, oh, we were talking about being bullied um, beforehand, and Kevin, you feel that the, it's just too much in your face, this whole bully issue, kind of media, like... issues I have with education in America is we no longer, there's no hierarchy, there's no standard, there's no place for anything, you know? Oh, it, it, everybody's a winner. No matter if you lose, you still get a trophy. Or You're still a winner. Trophy. Yeah, you know, and, and you know, when you had games like dodgeball, you know, in school, you knew who the kids that were athletic were going to be real quick, you know? Uh, you, you know, if you had first to get out. Well, I mean, you know, I'm gonna admit, I'm, I was one of those people that couldn't. I, I was, I was bad at sports. I was the one who. Yeah, and you know what the PE teacher would do? They'd make you captain of the team that got to pick the team. And if you got to pick the team, no, the not every, not every, not every teacher did that. I mean, like some of them just let you. Like I used to go way, way outfield, hoping that the ball would just somehow never come out as far as me. <laughs> you know, I mean, the, it's. But I mean, yeah, there's this, there's bullying. But I mean, it's not, it's not like take dodgeball away. Did they take dodgeball away and sports away because of that? Yeah. Oh yes, they I did. Before the bullying stuff. I used to get bullied not just because I was gay, but because I had a high IQ and I liked books and studying and reading. Me too. And every time they bully me and pick on me, I thought to myself, "You sons of a bitch! If someday I'm gonna grow up and own me a fucking media broadcasting outlet and tell the whole world." What assholes you were while you're sitting there on your fat ass and sucking down bear being a loser. <laughs> well, isn't isn't that the stereotype though? In a way, it's it's like you know the 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 brainy kid or the one who got picked on ends up being you know huge like very successful and you know the beautiful people in high school kind of you know got fat and you know like on crack or something <laughs> or at least you wish that's what happened to them. I don't know what. Yeah. They hit 30 and no longer shoot. Prince once said when he was asked by somebody in the press, how come you no longer wear such provocative uh, outfits like you used to and, and show a little more skin? And Prince said, because I'm 40 years old. And let me tell you, when you're 40 years old, nobody wants to see 40-year-old skin, not even a 40-year-old. I know how to dress. I do it. <laughs> I love Prince. And yeah, me too. I like a lot. Yeah. <laughs> with a red pen anymore because it gave too many bad vibes. You know, I mean, it's the pussification of America. And, yeah. and, it, and it, it, it's, I'm, I'm sick of it. It's like, you know, when I grew up, you know what my parents, you know, I had my dad and my, my uncles and his brothers hung out. They liked to get drunk. And their idea of a good time was to 
take me and my cousin, you know, my uncle's kids, and make us fight each other for their entertainment. Right? I know it sounds horrible, but we had a, you know, we all grow up and we had a great, we we look back on it and laugh, you know? And me and my cousins are very close to this day. You know? so Except for the one cousin that sits in fucking psychiatrist's office going, (laughs) (laughs) We don't have, you know what's funny? is We actually don't have that one. Oh, you guys beat him up long ago. We beat that right out of him. You know what I think the bullying thing goes wrong? It's like, I, I, number number one is like, everybody gets it and everybody gives it at some point. You know, like, I was at, you know, schools where, you know, like, the, the dirty, smelly kid got picked on, but like, the smart kid was like, you know, kind of left alone. Like, oh, that's the really smart kid. Yeah, cool. Whatever, but like, uh, if if they stop saying you're a bully and like taking this whole victim stance, and instead turn around and just point them out as like, look at this freaking cheesehead, like check out this freaking, look at these are the douchebags. This and like they carry that, they might gain confidence, and if they gain confidence, whoa. Right, and you can you can you can shame a freaking, you. I mean, uh, uh, in my head, I'm I'm. Seeing, you know, like a, a you know, a guy with frosted tips and like a polo shirt with a popped collar and a, and a very orange tan because he's been at the tanning salon and he probably shaves his chest. Like those are the guys that I think like, you know, were like the ones that would, you know, really fuck with people in the worst ways. Like everyone should learn how to deal with like a razzing and a bit of hazing because that's how you get out in the real world. I think a lot of times people get jobs, you know, uh, at, you know, uh, you know, downtown, not just because they have the, you know, credentials or whatever, but they went to school and they got like certain level degree. People want to see that you went through the bullshit. They're like, Oh, you went through the bureaucracy. Oh, you stood in line for four years. Right. Hey, I did that too. Cool. Yeah. We've got that in common. But don't you think that maybe we could have, I mean, why does it have to, like, why does it have to stay that way? I'm, I'm not saying that, I'm not saying not have sports or, you know, a red marking pin or, you know, I mean, like, like the, you know, the institution makes all these different um, rules uh, that we need to, um, you know, uh, you know, the, you know diff- all these different rules that we, that, that they're, they, they're doing to maybe stop something. You know, um, but maybe education that children go, look, you know what, you need to be kinder to the other kids, you know, like be kinder to the kid that that maybe is a little bit different than you are. You know, I mean, I mean, you, I was, I mean, and again, and, and if you want to talk about being bullied, you know, I had a period of time where I was ostracized and in, in, when I was young, um, you know, I had a, I, I was the girl with the back brace, you know, I had scoliosis, so I had to wear a back brace and, um, and I wasn't very good at sports. What? Stick to you? No, they didn't say, I mean, so, you know, they, they'd go, oh, you know, flat back is up, you know, to, you know, and I was going to go kick the ball or whatever, you know, and just like, there's these, you know, hey, man, you run like you ro- walk, you can't even run, you know, I mean, like all these uh, different things. And, you know, there's certain situations that happened at that time. And, you know, I got to say, there was, you know, years later, I, I was in therapy and I, I was actually, I was, I, in, I had a moment where I ate that pain that I had at that time as a child or in those years still had, it was somewhere affecting me and also motivating my interrelationships with other people based on it. And um, so it's not, I mean, again, you, you know, like, like why can't we as people become more tolerant people and, and, ha- and teach your own children to be kinder to the people that are around them? I mean, why, uh, why do we like break off into groups and ostracize people and, and uh, you know, have a hierarchy in, 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 in the system and how we treat one another? You know, um, I, you know I, why, why do we have to well, you buck up, you know? Well, really, I mean, like when, when do we evolve? as I mean I to me I, I feel like it maybe that this is part of our evolution is to be more acceptable and tolerant of people overall people. you have hunters you have gatherers I mean you can take it down that simple yeah but but then that's also saying that that's the past who says that we're not going to come out of that like why are we like thinking that they, this is the way it is and this is the paradigm in which we have to live in I agree with you Terry I really do 
If you've got a paradigm, then you then you have twenty cents. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of that, I just want to say something tonight, and I, you know, that um, we this network needs some money, you know. So if there's somebody who is watching this right now and you like what you're seeing and you want to see more of it, or you know, uh, and realize too that, you know, we are starting out at this. So, you know, our shows are only going to get better. Um, you know, all of us that are doing this right now, we have different, we have jobs. We're worried about like, you know, keeping the lights on. Literally, we're worried about keeping the lights on. And yet we are up into the wee hours of the morning, not sleeping hoping to create you know we believe we, we believe in what we're doing we believe that we're creating a network that's going to get a voice of uh of the hemp movement and you know marijuana and get some truth out there and some fun and maybe some laughter and some good times and we we just have this vision and so if you're watching right now i think there's like three viewers on my Ustream. i don't, I don't know who they, who they might be hopefully they're not the feds but they are nice to meet you guys peace um they can donate. They can donate. donate to our cause. You know, I mean, oh, where can they donate? If they are feds, I do give them money every couple of years for the policeman's ball. That's I right. If we we give to the policeman ball, fuckers, you can give us some money. <laughs> I get from getting pulled over, you know, if you have that sticker in your back window. Yeah. It's worth the $10. Well, that's what I hear. I mean, you know, but it, does it still work if your registration is expired? <laughs> right, but I've got my policeman's ball sticker. They'll never pull you over. What? They'll never find out if they never pull you over. So if they get behind your car, if they see that sticker, they're like, "Oh, she's a donator." Next. <laughs> yeah, I actually did. I did a show for the policeman's ball one time. I wow. did. I did. I did. No. <laughs> he got balled by a policeman. No, no there's. The there, there was um, I there was a policeman's ball that they hired uh, some comics at, and um, I was working with um, gosh, this one guy went on to do like some 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 t a TV show, and Stephen, God, I can't even remember his name right now, but the one there was one guy named Freddie Soto who was really really funny, and we were all partying after the show and stuff like that, and um. You know, they got like like I went and hung out with them longer. I was working with Vic Dunlap and uh, and uh, Stephen Austin. They went back to the hotel room. And they go just make sure she gets back by 7 a.m. in the morning because, you know, we got to go back to L.A. We were kind of near San, you know, like Escondido, San Diego area, and um, we got we like all of a sudden we get in we we get in, into the in the car and my friend Freddie goes I want some coke and I'm like oh shit and we go on this like freaking drug will run for 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 cocaine. And, uh, and, and so we end up being in this, like, we go to this house and there's a painting of Jesus. And I'm like, it just, you know, just goes on and on. Eventually we end up in Mexicali. We like, we cross the border looking for cocaine. I'm like, oh my God, what is happening here? And I would look at Freddie and I go, you know, I don't think this is going to happen. He goes, no, it's not about that. It's about the journey. It's about the journey that matters. And we go into this strip club and, you know, and, and, and it was, it was packed and it was like three o'clock in the morning and they go, we're going to go get some Corona. And I'm like, all right. So I'm sitting there and the stripper comes up and she goes, Weta, I love Weta's. And she bends over and she's like, smack my ass or whatever. And so I, I spanked her ass and the crowd went crazy. I mean, like the whole room was like, wow, like that. And these guys were completely gone for beer and they came back and they go, hey, um, you know, I go, you guys missed like this really big show. And uh, then the police officer comes up there, the policeman was there one of the one of the main guys from the policeman's ball comes up and he goes hey you guys are funny man they come and they shake our hands and every you know everything and he goes we're here to support our friend she's a uh, stripping tonight uh she's from orange county and i'm like hey you know and we're like waving and stuff and then and they go so you're gonna stick around and watch i'm like yeah yeah we're gonna watch and then he leans into us and he goes um can you like uh not tell anybody that you saw me here tonight and um i looked at freddie soto and i go you know what that means he goes what i go we're gonna get booked back <laughs> but um 
it was weird. I mean, like the stripper came out and she was just like the one from you know Orange County was just nasty. I mean, nasty. I mean, like you can do nasty things in Mexico that you can't do <laughs> when you cross the border in America. And uh, and it was to the point where I was like, oh my God, can she do that? It's kind of like, you know, not, you know, and apparently so. But that's what made her the headliner. Were there equines involved? No, I mean, they, it's like, it's like, it's almost like the, like she allowed guys to put their finger in her and stuff. It was really like, it was like they, she allowed them to like get way closer than I've ever seen a stripper do. That sounds like Tacoma. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> I'm in yeah. the surf and turf, but I only ordered steak. <laughs> so we didn't we didn't we didn't find any drugs and you know which is okay which is cool with me because I, I i certainly like didn't want to have anything happen but we crossed the border and i know it's just like one of those it's one of those comedy comedy road adventures and you know what freddie soto died um about a couple years after that um yeah he didn't he he died a young man had an aneurysm to sleep but anyways God bless you, Freddie Soto. That was an adventure. So maybe he's out there in the ethers listening to this. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know. Yeah, but... Just, see, what? It'd be neat if, like, the, the, like the future, we can, we can zone in on the frequencies of our dead loved ones and friends. Well, we might. We, you know, I've heard that that's, you know, a possibility. Right? I mean... I just made that up. That would be really cool. <laughs> But, I mean, there are some people that say that they, they are able to communicate with, um, but I don't know. I think it's possible that you that, that, that maybe the, the, in your dreams, you know, have you ever uh, dreamt about somebody who passed away? Oh, yeah. I, I, I got, well, dream, dreams are a funny thing. It, I mean, we might have talked about this once before, but it's your pineal gland releasing DMT, dimethyltryptamine, into your brain, which is, you know, shaman powder or the the chemical connection to the spirit world so to speak it's like every night when you go to sleep and lose a dream you're doing more dmt than you're legally allowed to carry i didn't know that oh yeah oh yes and that's why you're because i've had some very that you only, that your brain only gets it twice in your lifetime when you're born and when you die oh no you do it every night that's Joe Rogan, man. Actually, he has Joe Rogan does have an interesting podcast where they talk about it. But I'd love to have Joe on not only as a guest, but I'd love to have him bring some of his his work to our network. He is a funny, funny man, a very bright individual, a very dedicated activist on so many different fronts, a very learned individual. And he's managed to take comedy and use it as a way to make people stand up and pay fucking attention. And he is genius with his com comic timing, and he's very clever in the way he works in a message when you're not paying attention. He plays deaf, dumb, and stupid so well, you don't realize how smart he really is sometimes. Anyway. I think he's a genius at marketing. He he's a genius at marketing his podcast. If anybody knows him, you got to let him know that I am truly one of his biggest fans have been since uh, back when he was on uh, just you know, on a uh, radio, uh, radio show with uh, Talk radio. Yes, no, with, with Andy Dick. When he's on that, when he's on that show with Andy Dick. And are, are you Casper? Is that your name? It is, and I just love Joe Rogan, and I have been a true fan of his ever since I heard him deliver a comedy line on that show, and then heard him speak half the movie, and I thought, damn. Man, and the marijuana movement is lucky to have him on our team. So anybody who can get that message to him, even if he tells me to go fuck myself, I don't care. He, that way he knows I respect and care very much about him and his work. Thank you very much. You know, I... I, I, I he comes on, it's like the voice of God. Like, like I always forget that Casper's there. <laughs> and he said something totally rad. You're like, all right. It's, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Uh, we get to take a commercial break, but we'll be right back. Right after this, here on the Broadcasting Network of Time for Him. If you are in the... I had 
had to do that extra line, Terry. I didn't mean to step on you going out, but I wasn't ready for the fucking break. You caught me off guard. Oh, that's okay. Um, you no, know. It's not polite to do that when the host speaks. You're never to talk after the host. So forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. But I wasn't ready. You caught me off guard. Well, I wasn't. I wasn't even really. Um, you know, I like like you know you were talking, and then and then I don't I don't know. I mean, like you said something. I mean, like you commented on. You know, you're just part of the conversation. I, you know, it, it's fine. We we really like a minute over. I mean, like I am respectful of your position as the host, Pam, and I never ever forget it. Oh. Oh. So. And you got an extra five minutes tonight because you started five minutes late. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Get all my beer. You what? You drink all your beer? I don't know who's drinking all my beer. Oh. It seems, it seems like I open one. It's, I swear to God, it seems like I open one. And, and I'm not moving anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, I come with a beer in my hand. I look down at my table here, which is just covered in empty beer cans. Do you have a dog? Is your dog drinking your beer? No, I don't. I, no, Marley smokes his pot. Oh. Yeah, Marley smokes my pot. <laughs> Mr. A, Mr. P a, likes my cat likes to get a, a get pot. Sure would have a fucking fit. <laughs> <laughs> my dog loves to smoke weed. Oh, that's not something that happened today. My my daughter got suspended from school today. Why? From Alaska. What she do? Well, somebody they were writing notes in class back and forth, uh-huh. and it got written that uh, one of the kids gave her pot backpack and hold for them. Oh my. So they took her down and they fucking searched her and uh, and uh, emptied her bag and there was no pot. There was nothing. But they found a little pocket knife and suspended her from school for fucking seven days for carrying a weapon. Wow. Uh, you, know, you know in a court of law that that was the police that wouldn't hold up. Because exactly. They, I went, because I went, they down went there school. looking for pot didn't find even what they were looking for, but then tried to bust her on something else. Good luck no, with that. I made them. I made them get the cop down there. Right. And the cop was in the fucking office with us today. I was fucking great. I was pissed. Right. And then I found out they didn't lay a hand on. You know, they they did a uh, soft search. They didn't they didn't touch her or anything. And then then I calmed down a little bit. But still, but the cop the cop informed me that the schools actually have. More uh, have more authority than the cops do as far as search and seizure. Wow, wow. But because the school, because the school takes your kid as, um, well, the, the, I, I guess it's they they act as the parent during the day, so they're allowed to uh, they're allowed to do that kind of stuff, uh, search you and all this stuff. That's what the cop was doing. I was. Right, but the, 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 yeah, they can still search, but my thing is, is they went looking for pot. Exactly. They didn't find it. If you exactly. get to search my house for pot, and you found a computer, or you found a knife that you thought might be illegal, and you tried to charge me with it, it'd get thrown out, because that's not now, what you were Now get this, now get this, after I told them, yeah, we gave her the fucking knife, she right. lives in fucking Gresham. Fucking dumb fucks. This is the sixth fucking worst city in the fucking country to live in, as far as violence. So, so please, you know, uh, what the fuck? Yeah. And so he's saying, so you, so you uh, knowingly let her break the law. Ah. And I'm like, excuse me. She's 15 years old. She wasn't breaking the law. Well, bringing it to school is break. I said, what fucking law? Your school law? Fuck you. <laughs> is that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> and then the cop came in and I said, what kind of fucking law? Is there a law in the books that my kid can't have a fucking knife? No. Calm down, sir. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it was. And so after I flipped out, the, the fucking uh, the principal says, well, after this, after this discussion we had today, I think I'm definitely going to call DHS and have, have DHS come in and inspect everything. To make sure that you're providing it. I said, you know, you motherfucker, I'm going to talk about you on the radio tonight, you son of a bitch. Uh, <laughs> well, right. let's do it. We're coming back in 10 seconds, so here we go. It's the final countdown. <laughs> And 
we're back with more Hollywood Hemp Sour on the Time for Hemp Network. Uh, we have North Blatt Forsgren and Kevin Korn and Jason America uh, and Casper Leach with us. Uh, and uh, we're into the last uh, 20 minutes of our show. Uh, and just on the break, I love how things come up on the break, uh, North Blatt was saying that his daughter uh, got in trouble at school and there's marijuana involved in it. Well, I mean, there, there was accusations of marijuana. Right, involved. accusations. There was no actual marijuana right. involved. But accusation, accusations, which kind of do you, and I'm going to ask you a question about it after, after the story uh, to tie it in, but like, what, so what happened? So we get, we get informed that by, um, by Alaska's uh, dad, I'm, I'm Alaska's stepdad, and we get informed by Alaska's dad that Alaska get, got suspended yesterday. So Tabitha got up, or me and Tabitha got up early this morning and went down there to go to this meeting with the uh, principal. And we were irate because our daughter was searched um, and uh, and whatnot. And from what we had been told that she was, she was uh, you know, she was searched and whatnot. And, and without any parents uh, being notified or, or anything of that, you know, of that nature. And uh, they didn't find any marijuana on her person. Uh, they didn't find any marijuana in her bag. Um, what they found was a small pocket knife um, uh, in her bag, at the bottom of her bag, um, in which they promptly um, uh, called a weapon and uh, suspended her from school for. Uh, we went down there and uh, we talked to the uh, talked to the uh, principal. After about five minutes of my talking to the principal, uh, he had the uh, police come in. <laughs> And, uh, and kind of mediate uh, between us um, because there was a lot of confusion as to what kind of rights um, the, the school has to um, search and uh, to search students in their office without parents being there. And come to find out from the cop um, that the uh, principal has more has a lot more leniency towards him for certain, you know, for doing that kind of things than, than the cops even could. The cop told me himself that he would not have been able to do that without without one of the parents being notified or without parents being there. Um, or, or even with that kind of information, with just a note from some other kid saying that Alaska um, has their pot. Um, and they just did, you know, legally... A cop wouldn't be able to search her for that. But for some reason, the principal was okay to search her for that. Huh. I, I, I thought that was kind of interesting. First yeah. thing I was saying to that North Platt is that uh, I've, se I've seen so many videos of cops qu quote-unquote quoting law, and they're, they're talking out of their asses. Yeah. They're, they're well, not, that's how I felt in this situation, too. They're not lawyers at all. And, and, you know, like, I, you know, one thing I saw today that this, the first thing this makes me think of is uh, uh, a, a, a friend that I'm sure Terry knows, Justin Kurtzen, uh, their 16-year-old pulled out of high school and just is going for the GED and going to start a community college right away. And it, it's something I wish that I would have done when I was 16 years old. I didn't know any, I didn't even know it was an option. Yeah. But you may yeah, not have to find that. But I, you know, obviously the Gresham school system and the city of Gresham itself has some serious issues, and it's it's not to be trusted. The people are to be trusted in so many ways because there is so much violence. There is so much, you know, the you know really bad drugs out there. Like, this uh, is a girl with no record. And she she's barely she's had one detention in her whole school career. You know. She has good grades. She's not a problem child. But as soon as they heard that we were uh, that we were medical card holders, uh -huh. uh, they decided that that was that was definitely just cause for them to call DHS. Uh, Did, are you serious? Uh, yeah, yeah. He said that he wanted to make sure he wanted to talk to us first and see what kind of people we were first. And uh, after I, you know, after my my little bout with him, he got his fucking little little evil eyes going on and stared at me for a good five minutes while the cop was talking, uh, staring me down and shit. 
when the cop was done talking, he tells me, you know, after our conversation, I believe we are going to call DHS and uh, and have them come down. Did you have and a copy of the report from the police officer? For what? Did you have, you should turn to the cop and go, can I get a report from you? You should have uh, asked the cop, you should have turned and asked the cop in front of that cop second principal, and you should have said, I want a report on this, and the cop would have been a report on what? On this asshole threatening me with DHS, or else I'm going to press charges. So basically, he's, they, like, the guy profiled you as being a not a good parent based on the fact that you were medical marijuana car. Uh, exactly. And that she was rumored to have marijuana, but never fa was found with marijuana, just a pocket knife, and she's being suspended for that. I mean, like, that just seems kind of interesting to me. asked a note that said she had marijuana. Uh-huh. they went through her backpack, didn't find it, but found out her parents were cardholders. They're going to call DHS. That's not right. Yeah. That's not right. Instead of the ones even talking about the pot. Why aren't we calling their parents and calling DHS on the kids that were passing the note about well, because because the kid has a generic name like Bob or Tom or fucking something like that. Alaska is a very unique name. There's only one Alaska in school, so they knew exactly who to go after. Right. Uh, the name is on the note. I uh, definitely message that because there was only one Casper. Almost everywhere I've ever gone. Right? The name Jason. Jason is is is, is sorry, pretty, pretty common. <laughs> I've got four different pot dealers named Jason. Thank you. I've, I've had four different tricks named Jason in the last twenty four. Hours. <laughs> 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 I'm hilarious. Website, stab your principal, stab your principal. <laughs> stab him with a love knife. So, are you, I mean, are you, now what happens with DHS? That's what, like the, uh, what oh, is, what? Never be able to find me. Do you know where I live? <laughs> well, no, I don't. Does anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> but then they'll go, um, wasn't he on that radio show? But then again, you, we don't know where you're at. We Nobody knows exactly where, where we're broadcasting at. Who is the real North Black Foreskin? <laughs> uh, we should call the school dick. We, you know what we should do? We should go a step further and say, screw this guy. We should call the di school district, the, you know, the, the county school district office, and file complaints against the principal. And then maybe even call a couple of a, a, a TV stations. Like KATU's on your side. Like, they, 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 they went after my daughter for this. Right. Didn't find it. Found out I was a card holder and then decided to call DHS. And find a journalist who, who, has, who has kids and would understand what it would be like to have that kind of threat laid on their doorstep just because their kid had a pocket knife. At school, probably given to them by their grandmother or as a gift at Christmas or some nonsense. So, yeah, yeah I'd make a brouhaha. And then I would personally write an article about it, send an article, letter to the editor in every newspaper, and maybe even try to get an article written up in a, in a, uh, a statewide uh, magazine. It's very ambitious. And you know what you could do, too, is you could just, like, give him a link to the show. You were going to do that? Yeah, too. And give him a link to the show and go, hey, we talked about you. Yes. And, and, you know, and, and maybe, you know, and just let's just tell him, like, you know, like you're, it's out in the public on the time for him. A whole world can hear the story of your discrimination of us because we're medical marijuana patients. Well, and that's cool, too, because there's an army of lawyers coast to coast called N-O-R-M-L, Normal, and you can find them at normal.org who would love to take on this case. So, yeah. if they can pick a fight with you, they can pick a fight with the whole normal organization and maybe even a couple of members of the ACLU. And between all that and the press, I think Mr. Stupid Head Principal, you know, oh no, but what do the kids call him? Poopy Head Principal. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll get a better uh, attitude. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, I was just, I was pretty blown away by it. And that, that's part of the reason why I, uh, I wasn't on last night is I, uh, I went to bed 
Tabitha didn't get home from work until about uh, three thirty this morning, and uh, or yesterday morning, and um, and so it was just it was just a you know it was just a fuck day all around, but. But yeah, that just that just really got my fucking goat today, man. I would, yeah. Ugh. Wow. Well, uh, you know, I'm glad that you're able to um, be on this show and 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 talk about it because it's definitely um, related uh, to, well, yeah. Because yeah. it's got. Well, I, so. I think it's interesting that this is happening, um, and she has a pocket knife and she's suspended. But then we had, you know, all those school shootings and stuff like that. I mean. Do you think that that's coming into play with any of this at all? I doubt it. It wasn't an AR-15. Right. But, I mean, they make such a big deal about a pocket knife. How does that... He asked me where she got the knife. I looked at him and I said, on the black market. She probably bought it, you know, underground at some fucking dark, shadowy fucking (laughs) knife dealer. You know? And he's like, you don't have to be like that, Mr. Forrest. I said, I don't. Where do you think she fucking... fingernails with I mean like I mean are you trying to like you open a can when you I mean it, it just it, I mean like how much of a weapon is like a, a pocket yeah, exactly. like, pocket knife pocket knife I mean hey if I was I a pocket, with a countless army knife and pointed at me I would just look at him and go wow this is going to be a lot easier than I thought yeah it was so much it was so so big of a weapon that she had to empty all of her fucking books out of her bag to get to it <laughs> Well, don't forget, with fingernail files, they overtook an entire jet airliner and flew it into the World Trade Center. That's right. If you believe, they put a man on the (laughs) bed. Question that, like, you, if you say these things to them, they're like, "Oh, you're one of those people." Right. We know it was Barack Obama bin Laden. Right. <laughs> I, I like to call him Malik. 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 Malik Obama. Why? Because every time you, you lay eyes on him, it makes you piss your pants. That's uh, the whole I, I had face-to-face comp, uh, contact with Malik Obama. I probably would piss my pants. <laughs> Is 
Gary Glitter is banned from like everywhere. Uh, Roman Polanski. Oh, no. <laughs> well, too. yeah. Uh, I was just, yeah. Just like, I since I was like seven, never worked. Well, I, it was pointed out on, uh, on a funny posting on Facebook that if you rearrange the letters in President Barack Obama, it spells out an Arab backed imposter. <gasps> oh my God. Are you serious? Really? Barack Obama, there's no S T E R in Obama. No, if you rearrange the letters in President. Oh. But you know how is I mean we're talking about Bush being and his brother over here and this terrorism here and funding this here. It's the same thing that the Bush family did. I mean you know historically you know uh, you know Papa Bush is you know I mean they they've all been yeah they're all on the same team they're all on the same team. No no granted Papa Bush not not H but uh, but the 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 Bushes the Bushes dad um, even uh, the W's dad's dad was a Nazi right. Yeah. Well, at least he was. He, he got in trouble for for uh, helping the Nazis. Anyway, he got a couple uh, companies shut down and shit for it. Well, him. didn't he like help finance the? Uh, he helped finance it. Yeah. 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 So I mean, yeah. he he was the money guy behind it. I think. Anyway, we are out of time. Um, you know uh, this. Got an extra five minutes. Oh, remember, but but it's know. already been extra five minutes. Oh, oh, I have an extra five minutes. I have an extra uh, extra five minutes. minutes. Okay, well let's keep going. All right, so. Um, he, he, I think he financed um, the Hitler regime, right? Well, he helped finance it, yeah. Yeah. Same with IBM, but that's a different story. I mean, they, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's been going on, uh, you know, the, how the families have been interconnected and um, maybe even maybe even global. Uh, but again, you know, if you talk about like things like that, you know, I, I feel like if I discuss this in main, my mainstream world, um, you know, or it's it's almost like coming out again. It's like going like, well, what do you really think? Well, this is what the, this is what I know. I mean, this is what I've been reading. What have you been reading? And it's like it's like there's a, a sect of people that are they're completely different. They're like in absolutely denial. Either that or they just don't see it. Does anybody else find that? Absolutely, all the time. All yeah. the time, there are people who just refuse. That just they just they don't this is what I'm talking about. That's what I was talking about. Those people in Nebraska, they believe what the TV tells them. Right. They want to sit there in their trailer with a fan in the window because they can't even afford to run an AC. And they watch people like Sean Hannity on Fox News. And they live and die by his, what they have, by his words. And I just, I couldn't understand it. But it doesn't matter. It didn't even matter how much you tried to tell them. They were so set in their ways. They were, this is what it says. This is the way it is. Because they said, God, that's Jesus talking. That, 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 they're, they're, they believe in God. They believe in God. They're right. That, that's really how they think. Yeah, that's agreed. why they call it the Bible Belt of the country. Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't even think you have to go to the Bible Belt just to find it. I mean, I, I find people, no, too. Find yeah. Everywhere. The Bible Belt, it's, more, it's prominent. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's crazy. That's why they call it the Bible Belt. I guess. I get a friend of like Alex. It's really funny. <laughs> it's weird. Oh, um, I have this joke for you. <laughs> to realize that there's an evangelical vote, um, you know, that, that comes to play in, in, in poly, you know, voting for the president. They go, well, the evangelical vote is blah, 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 blah. And you're just like, wow. I mean, aren't we supposed to have a separation between church and state? No, no, that has nothing to do with politics. I think I think God has been I think God has been in uh, in American politics since the creation of the fucking country. Uh, I hate to say it, but it's true. I mean, that all all of the fucking I mean, in God we trust. Granted, I guess that wasn't added until the 1950s, right? In right. God we trust. Right. But all the forefathers talk about a belief in, in God or a higher power. I mean, fuck, they were all Masons. Right? They never and, said and in order to be a Mason, you have to have some belief in a higher power. But not, not, but not, not that uh, Christianity or... Yeah, but also, like...